does teen sex on screen affect adolescence? Recently, the impact of sex on television has emerged as a hot topic in research. Researchers are interested in looking at the relationship between the media and behaviors due to the increase in sexual content on television. Researchers from the RAND Corporation conducted two different studies in order to look at both sides of the argument. In the first study, they found that watching high levels of sex on television doubled the next year likelihood of initiating intercourse. In the second study, the researchers argue that sex on television can serve as a healthy sex educator and can work with parents when it comes to teaching adolescents about sex. and movies are incredibly influential on their kids' perceptions. The survey finding parents say movies and TV heavily influence their children. More than half of respondents saying they are especially concerned about their children seeing sexualization of girls and women, violence against girls or women, and boys or men shown as hyper-violent or aggressive. Do you see stereotypes being reinforced? Absolutely. We sat down with a group of parents who share many of these concerns. There's still the label that if a girl plays sports, she's kind of a tomboy instead of just a girl who plays. The article Watching Sex on Television predicts adolescent initiation of sexual behavior was used on the yet side of the argument. Rebecca L. Collins and her colleagues were interested in looking at if the amount of sexual content on TV viewed by an adolescent would have an influence on when they would begin to initiate intercourse and progress to higher levels of non-coital activity. The researchers hypothesized that adolescents exposed to greater amounts of sexual content on TV would initiate intercourse sooner and would progress more quickly to a higher level of non-coital activity. They also hypothesized that exposure to portrayals of sexual safety or the risks that accompany sexual activity would be associated with a delay in sexual advancement. The researchers gathered information from 1762 adolescents between the ages of 12 to 17 years old. The study was a longitudinal study and took place from 2001-2002. The adolescents included in the study were asked questions regarding TV viewing habits, sexual knowledge attitudes, and behavior. The answers to the questions were self-reported by the adolescents through telephone. The results of the study showed that kids who reported watching more sex-oriented programs at the beginning of the year were more likely than others their age to become sexually active during the next year. However, the study does take a look at other factors that may play a role in this outcome. The article reports that older age, having older friends, getting low grades, engaging in deviant behavior, and sensation seeking were all factors that were positively associated with initiation of intercourse among virgins. Parental monitoring parent education, living with both parents, being religious and having good mental health were all factors that were associated with a lower probability of intercourse initiation. The researchers entered all of the bivariate predictors of intercourse initiation or non-coital stage into their models as covariate. Even after taking those factors into account, exposure to TV sexual content remained a strong predictor of intercourse initiation among those who were virgins at the first interview. Exposure to sexual content was also strongly predictive of progressing non-coital activity. In the article, Sexual Behavior in Teens Increases with Exposure to Media, Jane D. Brown conducted a study that included 1,017 teens from ages 12 to 16 years old. The study was longitudinal and took place over a span of five years. Brown and her team analyzed the content of 308 television shows, movies, songs, and magazines that were used by teens. They found that the sexual behavior of teens studied increased nearly 30% over the two-year period. The idea behind these experiments takes into account that adolescents are very susceptible to new information and very curious about different things at that age. 
the theory of social learning comes into play when looking at the influence of TV shows with high sexual content being an influence on adolescents. Social learning theory is a theory of learning process and social behavior which proposes that new behaviors can be acquired by observing and imitating others. According to the Kaiser Family Foundation, sexual content currently appears in 70% of all television programs, 68% include talks about sex, and the 11% include scenes where intercourse is depicted or strongly implied. The amount of exposure to TV with sexual content continues to go up as well as an increase of what is being displayed in the shows to the viewers. According to the article, one of every seven shows including sexual content includes safe sex messages and nearly two-thirds are minor or inconsequential. What is being shown to the adolescents can be misleading and uninformative. Overall, Having a TV diet that is high in sexual content can be influential to adolescents and misleading if they interpret the information in the shows the wrong way. Now that we've heard the reasoning behind how TV affects teen sexuality, let's talk about the no side. This content analysis study called Entertainment Television as a Healthy Sex Educator, the impact of condom efficacy information in an episode of Friends was done by Rebecca L. Collins et al. The intent of this study was to counter the notion that television was usurping parents' role as sex educators. Rather than substituting for parents, television may act as a catalyst to conversation, giving parents and their children an entry to topics they find difficult to broach with one another. To explore positive opportunities for sex education via the entertainment media by studying the impact of one episode of the sitcom Friends that contained information about sexual risk. Findings to show that many adolescents changed their beliefs about condom efficacy as a result of the episode due to the fact the event portrayed might provide new information, inspire a search for information, or spur discussion regarding the issue of condom efficacy. It was hypothesized that the Friends episode would provoke conversation about the show between adolescent viewers and their parents and result in discussions of pregnancy and condom efficacy that might not otherwise have occurred. 33% of 15 to 17 year olds reported that they have had a conversation about a sexual issue with one of their parents due to something they saw on television. These conversations give parents a chance to provide their own input on sexual health issues. It also gives them an opportunity to challenge any negative media messages and to reinforce positive messages. In this study, edutainment is promoted as the potential for influencing health-related awareness, knowledge, and beliefs through television. Another way edutainment is promoted is by being able to give a very large audience a health message through television. The sample. Respondents were drawn from the larger group of adolescents, 12 to 17 years of age, in the RAN Television and Adolescent Sexuality Study, Tasmania. 648 adolescents, 506 were available for interviews. The procedure. 50% of participants were interviews within three weeks of the air date. And the remainder were interviews within four weeks of the air date. Median time between Tasmania Baseline and the Friends Survey was six months, as was the median time from the Friends Survey to Tasmania follow-up. Let's dive into the results of this study. The pregnancy episode may have reached more than half of teen Friends watchers in our sample. 64% recalled seeing the episode where Rachel tells Ross she is pregnant. Most of who saw the episode, 59% self-reported and 54% confirmed viewers, interpreted its message as lots of time, condoms don't prevent pregnancy. From 10% to 17% of viewers said they learned something new about condoms from that episode. 40% of those who reported watching the episode said they watched with an adult. 16% to 24% of viewers talked with an adult about the episode. 
10% walked with an adult about Rachel's pregnancy. 10% talked with a parent or other adult about condom effectiveness due to the episode. To conclude, conflicting evidence for the, the effects of sex on TV between the study was found. The first article presents evidence that adolescents who viewed high levels of sexual content were more likely to initiate intercourse and progress to more advanced sexual activities during the subsequent year. And exposure to talk about sex on TV was associated with the same risks as exposure to sexual behavior. The second article argues that sex on television could work in conjunction with parents to improve adolescent sexual knowledge and behaviors. Youth who watched sexual content on television with an adult and later discussed the content with an adult were more likely to benefit from the information that youth who did not watch with an adult. If sex is portrayed as irresponsible and enjoyable, adolescents process it as such and have a desire to imitate. On the other hand, when risks are addressed, they recognize the importance of safe sex. Furthermore, having an adult present during the program further enhances the adolescent's ability to interpret the messages effectively.